clones. This is not Jim Rome. Van Smack nor Pimp in the box. I know what you clones are about after some 30-odd years in the position I'm in. I know where you live. I know what you're about. This your proverbial wheelhouse. Clones, today I want to turn your attention to a particular point in time about 14 or 15 years ago. If you've been following the program that long, I don't have to mention Jason Stewart or Stu. But Jason Stewart from 99 to 2013 was the soundbite machine. From his legendary takes to his ability to set the stage for some of the most memorable segments in the history of the jungle, Jay Stu was a master at his craft. He was the guy who could take a simple idea and turn it into radio gold without the nicks and cuts of a blade. And let's not forget his interactions with the clones. Of a blade. Stuart had this uncanny ability to rub the audience the wrong way, and that was real, raw, and always entertaining. Whether he was hyping up a huge take or delivering a crushing comeback, Jay Stu was always on point. His keep calling weaklings was like nails on a chalkboard, hey clones. Calling weaklings. Stuart wasn't just a producer. He was a catalyst for ratings and a true punching bag to everyone on the team. From a failed acting career whose peers deemed him more wooden than William Shatner. So here's to you, Jay Stu, your legacy in the jungle from that mole on your face, to the embarrassment of you on dating reality programs, to the circle jerk days at Fullerton, it's all etched in stone, and your impact will be felt for years to come. Apropos of all that, clones, there was a listener back in 08 or 09 who had Stu's number, and he wrote a hack, cheese sauce song to end all hack. Cheese sauce songs directed at the much maligned ex-producer, and here it is. Right after you hear the monologue from 2008, me that is. This one's for Jay Stu. Here's the triple U, and trust me, this is the epitome of a triple U. Not only the epitome of a triple U, but a musical triple U. It is unfunny. It is unreadable. It is truly un uninspired. And the person who sent this in, a clone sent this in, attached a note that simply read, listen to this. It is funny. This is every single J. Stu cliche rolled into a single song where the guy makes you wait forever to get to the chorus, and it's the worst payoff imaginable. This is a J. Stu song sent in by a clone. There's no better day to play this than today. He's the weekly. From the 95 smack off, he's got a big mole on the side of his face in his dorm room. Back in college, he liked to watch porn with nine other dudes. Not the chorus yet. This guy's going to make you earn it. He is wooden and laconic. He only showers twice a week. Well, I'm going to sing along. You have to close the lyric sheet. Got him in some movies. I don't think this is on lyrics.com. Here it comes. See. Wait for it. And he's there is your chorus. Is Stu, yeah, J. Stu. No, there's a freaking Stu right there. Eddie's got to be pretty happy about this. Now he books guests for his show. He did a commercial for a razor without the Knicks. And every J. Stu cliche jammed into this. Of course. J. Stu. Hey, Zeus is furiously working up his next song in response. J. Stu. So is Bodie and Chad. J. And the Walrus. Not a 
We're aged to get to. Okay. Just a little background vocal. Where are the hot three gals in the back just grooving to it? The backup vocal. I would like just more? to talk more about him, but there's not much. I see these guys trying to sell three hot gals to sing back up. All you got to do is just a dish to just work it. Work it. This song is longer than Stairway to Heaven. How long is this song? We get this on iTunes? All right. Anonymous clone. Did they not sign that? Is there not a name? All right, Rob. There you go, Rob. You're in. Don't do it again, Rob. Hey, Rome, what did Jay Stu tell the doctor when he couldn't get his teeth out? Keep pulling, weakling. Dean in Omaha. Wore Jay Stu's shirt still being tucked in after the surgery was over. I like that. That's the first riddle. That's the first joke I've gotten in a while. What did Jay Stu tell the doctor when he couldn't get his teeth out? Keep pulling, weakling. Comes from Fullerton. Jason, you are in. Good to have you. Ben Smack. Hey, basically, just, you know, just like Hollywood, I'm not expecting to walk away with anything, but I am honored to be nominated. I'd like to thank the Academy and my parents for spoiling me that, that made me the condescending, selfish smacker that I am. But first of all, I'd like to... Uh, Explain to the new listeners and some of the weaklings who call in on a daily basis uh, what it's like to have game in the jungle. As Doc Mike said, keep calling. It just makes us look better. But just in case you're wondering, if you have the game to come into the jungle, just like Romy says, if you have to ask, you don't. But just a little words of advice here. First of all, when you call in, every other word you use, it should be a glossary term. Keep that up. Second of all, never back up your smack. Third of all, end the call with a huge good night now. Keep calling, weaklings. I know this is probably walking the thin line of blasphemy in the jungle, but I'd like to take down some of the favorites here in the smack off today. First of all, Doc Mike. Though he is a legend, he does spend a lot of his time uh, basically pummeling these weaklings who call in from the unemployment line from a payphone who's basically nobody. It's not hard to take down a weakling, but, you know, Doc Mike does have some smack. Second of all, William from San Diego, Romy, just watch him. He's a reader. Interrupt him. If he starts off with the same word he left off with, that's a clue. And last of all, Rome, I, I, can't, I can't really think of this. Who's ranked number one in baseball today for college? Clemson. Check again. Basically, weakling, secondly, third of all, that phone call, the Iraq, that phone call came from 1995. 95. Stu, what year did you start working on the show? Jay Stu has been employed by this show since 1999. That was Jason Stewart calling the first ever smack off, right? First ever smack off. 1995. Got that, weaklings? The guy who for years has routinely answered your phone call and told you that you weren't good enough made that phone call to this show in 1995. And the funny thing was, back in 1995, that was a great phone call. Not good enough to win. Not good enough to win. JT the Brick won that year. And parlayed that into a talk show of his own. Stu parlayed that call into a call screener job of his own. And a booker. Stu's had a good run, man. Eight years plus and working the day after getting all of his wisdom teeth ripped. That's manning up. It's a warrior play right there. Good job, Stu. And by the way, congratulations on that phone call in 95. Awesome effort. Got that, weaklings? To make a personal request, receive channel merchandise, or to just... Hook a brother up, hit up the cash app on the screen, or make a contribution to the PayPal shown on the screen.